Hello and welcome to Rule of Threes video review for Deadly Premonition, a open world survivor horror game from Access Games. With me is Impressions. How are you doing? Doing all right. Yourself? Doing great. So Sinister is not with us on this. He had a work schedule with this one. So it's just the two of us. So we're going to jump right into this with the story. So the story follows FBI Detective York as he is called into a town to solve a grisly murder involving a chick and like pretty much torn to pieces on a tree uh and you just go in to investigate however york himself is kind of a schizophrenic he talks to himself he also can see dead people um and you go through the town you try to solve the murder and figure out what happened as well as you know, there, there are a couple of people that are killed throughout the storyline, you know, find the killer. Uh, in terms of the story, I thought the story was intriguing, and I love the characters and the dialogue in this game. I think that's its biggest strength, and I I got a couple of chuckles. This is very kind of, what's survivor horror, it's not that scary. It's a little bit more kind of lighthearted in a way with the dialogue and stuff, and I liked it. I thought it was a nice... I, like I said, I like the dialogue and the characters. I thought they all you know, were kind of mem memorable to some extent. Impression? Yes. Specifically, the main character, York, who's, uh, like you said, schizophrenic. And the most striking feature about him is that he talks to his other persona, who he calls Zack. And I none come to mind where a game uses that kind of plot device. And I thought it was very... It, that, that, that alone was very interesting to me. So that was a nice little unique approach the, that the game used. And uh, like you said, it was very character driven and very story, very strong story. So that's pretty much why I was motivated to play. Yeah. All right. We don't, we don't do a whole lot of story anymore on these reviews because we try to avoid spoilers nowadays. And we want to get into the meat, which is gameplay. So we're going to start with gameplay. So, uh, Gameplay is basically third-person shooter, very reminiscent of like Resident Evil 4. When you shoot, you can't move. It's over the shoulder. You point, aim, click. That kind of deal. Uh, combat, I thought, worked very well. It's very basic. Uh, nothing unique, really, about it. But, you know, it was fun. Uh, and I enjoyed it. Impressions? What surprised me about the gameplay, actually, was the quick time events. Yeah. yeah. It was a really basic looking game and the first time it happened it really did catch me off guard and i died because of it <laughs> so uh, yeah definitely keep sharing your toes it's uh i i just was really just surprised to see it there in general when i thought i, I thought it was an older game but apparently it just came out after resident evil 4 so it's not revolutionary or anything like that but it's a uh, i just was surprised to find the current generation mechanic in this game when I thought it was going to be very slow paced. Yeah. Uh, the other part of the game that is kind of combat oriented, you do this is investigation. So you have to find clues, whether around the crime scene or in these, uh, when you fight ghosts and to open puzzles and stuff. Uh, and you look around, you get pictures and then he puts those pictures in his head and you, he does what's called profiling and he'll figure out what's going on or what he thinks is going on based off evidence and what he sees. I like this mechanic. I thought it worked really well. Yeah, it's basically a representation of his thought process and pretty much his schizophrenic picture. I thought it was a good use of the plot device of, of it as a plot device, and it was a good way to connect the gamer, or a good excuse to give the gamer that layout uh, or that interface to work with, pretty much. Yeah. All right. So, next thing I want to go into is open world. This is by far the only survivor game with that says survivor horror that is really this open world like gta open world however i'm going to get into this because this is probably my biggest pet peeve with open world games in general and this one very much in particular there's two types of open world with me there's open world that is done well this is going to be sleeping dogs there's a lot to do on the map uh plenty of things going on I, you know, it's not huge it's big but you know it's not big enough to where you know i'm getting tired of traveling halfway across the map and then there's open world done bad. This is where this game falls in and where I also put uh, De Red Dead Redemption. I, I know everybody loves this game. I actually despise it because of its open world. There's just nothing there. It's a lot of nothing. And that's the same with this game. It's a huge open world, but there's nothing. Pretty much one big map. Very, very few objectives. 
that those objectives being the main uh, main and then the side quests. Yeah, we have the side quests already, but my main issue is it should not take me 15 minutes to go from point A to point B at any time. That is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I felt the reason they did that was so they could emphasize a lot of the conversation that happens as you drive. But still, it's it. They, I felt they overshot. They made it too long, and that's a good way to really lose your audience. It's in fact, that's I feel that's why they lost me um, as far as my interest in it. Yeah. yeah. Basically, if ever a game needed fast travel, it's this, it's this game. I mean, there's things on the map, but they're so far and in few and in between. It's just like I don't want to spend 15 minutes traveling to every place on this map. Dear, I, I just couldn't handle that open world. So there you have it. That's my take on it. Uh, lastly, that I want to go into is side quests. Uh, because this is an open world, there are tons of side quests. Well, not tons. There are side quests. Though. Uh, they're, they're fun. But once again, I lose motivation to do them because most of them take 15 minutes to travel across the map to go to point B to figure out what you need to find. A couple of them are really short, but some of them are just... Yeah. Goes back to that whole problem I have with the open world. Impressions. Yeah. Uh, the side quests, uh, like, I, like we said, they're all too far, and that alone killed my motivation to even do them. Yeah, as if my motivation to play the game was already weak enough as it, as it is. So, yeah. yeah that's it. Alright, so with that, we'll go into our verdict. So, here at Rule 3, we do not use a numbers system, because numbers can mean a lot of things. Instead, we use a buy run pass because it's very simple. A buy means we think it's whatever it's worth whatever the publisher wants for their game. It's just that much fun and awesome that you know it's definitely worth full price. Uh, rent means you know we thought it was okay. It's, it's a good game, but not worth that full price. Probably you know half off, rent it from GameFly or Redbox or something, or wait for it to go on sale for cheap before you know drop money on it. Uh, pass means bury it, bury it deep. And hope it doesn't come back as a zombie. If it does, shoot it in the head. Make sure that it stays dead. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I, Roy Manon, give this game a rent. Uh, the storyline and characters I thought were great. Uh, I, the, I got kind of pulled into the investigation a little bit. But the damn open world killed most of this for me. It's the only thing really getting in its way from getting a buy from me. Because it, it just killed it. Any... Like, I don't know, it was broke up too much stuff, and it hurt this game way too much. Impressions? Um, I give it a pass. In the same way that I'd push it down to a rent for you from a buy, I would have given it a rent, and the open world, like, I, like I'm, 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 I'm with you, it's really probably the worst thing I could have done with the game. Just right. by having a fast travel alone, it would have improved the overall quality. Yeah. But in that case... Since the only thing driving it for me was the story, just, just either watch a playthrough online or read the story on, or read the synopsis somewhere, and that's all you really need to take from the game. All right, so there you have it. You have a rent for me and a pass from impressions. Uh, that's it for this one. Uh, next week we'll be doing Metro Last Light. Uh, the Never Winter Online should also be up around the same time this one's up, depending on which one I uploaded first. Uh, so keep an eye out for that one. Watch that one since it's a double feature week. Uh, thanks, Impressions. So make sure to leave a comment below for entries into The Last of Us. Remember me giveaway we're doing this month. Uh, subscribe up top. Like us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, follow our website, rulo3.com. All the links should be below in the description somewhere. Uh, make sure to tell your friends and our gaming communities about us. We're trying to grow. The bigger we get, the more stuff we're able to do and more motivation we have to, you know, review more games and stuff like that. Um, other than that, you know... Thanks for listening, everybody, and always remember to trust in the rule of three.